The city of Mesa acknowledges that we gather on the homeland of the native people and their ancestors who have inhabited this landscape from time immemorial to the present day. The landscape is sacred and reflects cultural values central to the Odom, known as the Pima, and the Piposh, known as the Maricopa way of life and their self-definition. This acknowledgement demonstrates our commitment to work in partnership with ancestral indigenous communities to foster understanding, appreciation, and respect for this heritage. Please welcome Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community President Martin Javier to offer a blessing. Skuchiatic Kamdum Aniap Chugik Martin Javier, President of the Anak Milotam Altertam Pipash people. Uh, first of all, before I say uh, the blessing this morning, I wanted to thank the mayor for this opportunity to, to give the opening prayer. But I also want to give thanks to the city of Mesa. Uh, these past few years in the community, we've lost a couple of our first responders. And I want to thank the city of Mesa first responders for being there on behalf of our community during our time of need. So I wanted to publicly thank the, the first responders of the city of Mesa for their help. Thank you. Let us go to prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we humbly bow our heads before thee this beautiful morning, Heavenly Father, first of all, we give thee thanks. We give thee thanks because there's times we fail to acknowledge the blessings that each and every one of us receive. We're truly grateful for the rest that we receive, our home, our food, our health, our families. We're grateful for our communities, our towns, our country that we live in and the freedoms that we enjoy. So this morning, as the mayor gives his city address, we pray that you be with him, to be, be able to communicate the successes of this, of this city, this great city of Mesa. And Heavenly Father, we're grateful for all of those that are here and the contributions that they've given to this city, the corporations, the small business owners, all of those that are here. So Heavenly Father, as we move forward throughout this day, we ask that no harm and danger fall up upon any, keep everyone safe, and as always, Heavenly Father, bless our first responders, our police and our fire that protect our communities. And as always, bless those men and women serving our country, wherever they may be stationed throughout the world, that they be watched over and taken care of, especially during this time of conflict. Heavenly Father, again, we give thee thanks for the many blessings. We're grateful for any food or refreshments that have been served, that they'll be nourished and strengthened to our bodies. These favors and blessings, Heavenly Father, we pray for in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Please welcome Mesa Chamber Board Chair, Shannon Hines. Good morning and welcome to the 2024 Mayor's State of the City Breakfast. I'm Shannon Hines, Board Chair of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce and Area Manager and Loan Originator at Guild Mortgage Company. A few quick reminders. As we get started, please take a moment to turn off your cell phones, also, stay seated throughout the presentation and please feel free to take pictures. At the Chamber, we strive to provide our members with effective programs and networking opportunities that lead to success and growth for their businesses. Sally Harrison, her team, and the Chamber members show commitment to our community daily. We're fortunate to have such a strong Chamber and a strong network of supportive members in Mesa. I see a lot of new faces in the audience. I hope you were able to meet someone today new during breakfast. I'm pleased to share again that we filled the venue to capacity with over 900 attendees. Thank you all. This morning, we have many elected officials and VIPs in the audience from across the state of Arizona, and they are listed on the screen behind me. Will you all please stand to be recognized? <clears throat> we also have a group of dedicated sponsors. First, please join me in recognizing our presenting sponsor, our friend from Salt River Project. I'd also like to thank title sponsors Amazon and Edgecore Digital Infrastructure and VIP sponsor AMR for their support of this event.
We have more than 67 additional sponsors this year, and we'd love to recognize each and every one of you. But in the interest of time, we're gonna just let you see them listed on the screen. Thank you, sponsors. And again, thank you so much for your continued support of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce and the Mayor's State of the City Breakfast. Now let's get this party started. dog fell asleep on the couch. Come to bed. What? Okay. The mayor of Mesa, in the flesh. Who? Why am I in my office? My office, actually. I'm Ross and Anger Mesa. I'm on Tatooine. <laughs> Spoken like a true Star Wars nerd. Uh, I'm not a Star Wars nerd. Yeah? What's your dog's name? Chewbacca. Look, I, I don't know what's going on here, but I got my last State of the City speech this morning. My last one as mayor. You got to get me out of here. Let me explain. I'm Darth Cooper, ruler of this planet. But most importantly, President, City of Mesa Fan Club? I've seen a lot of cities on a lot of planets. Mesa's number one in the galaxy, baby. So, I made my own Mesa with a few Star Wars touches just for you. Come on, I'll show you around. Where's my clicker? Be right back. Hey guys, has anyone seen my clicker? Don! Where are you? I'm in my office on another planet. What? I've been abducted by some extraterrestrial Alice Cooper. John, if you're on another planet, how can I FaceTime you? I don't know, but we're sticking with AT&T. Wow. Found it. Don, call someone at Virgin Galactic. Maybe they can send someone to get me. Bemis to my Mesa Gateway Airport. What the? Guys, this is not my clicker. What did I tell you? Virgin Galactic says they have your location and they're sending someone. Who? I don't know. They said they got a guy. Just be ready. Commencing rescue mission. Copy that. Third time's the charm. My Mesa Gateway Airport. Daytime. Brand new tower, just like yours. Unbelievable. Same best in class airport. These are the same spaceships from Revenge of the Sith. My downtown. Wow, it, it's just like our downtown. Except, Except uh, it's mine. Anakin's pod racer from Phantom Menace. My level one arcade, please. Space age, just like my Mesa. Same as your level one arcade. Every classic arcade pinball machine that you can imagine. Beiru Bantha Milk from episode four. Wow, asteroids. Hey, look, this has been great, but my last state of the city is this morning. I have to go now. Or you could stay at my Mesa and live out your Jedi dreams forever. Stay? No. I don't think you understand. You're never going back to your Mesa. No, 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 no. Don't you see? You're the last piece of the plan. My Mesa only lacks one thing, a mayor. You. No, no! Let's discuss this somewhere more private.
You've got one more chance, Boy Scout. My Mesa or your Mesa? My Mesa. So be it. They did send someone. <laughs> no more, Mr. Nice Guy. Mayor, use the force. It's happening, Chewie. My life is a Star Wars movie. Step aside. Let me finish this. Take that, Darth Cooper. Ugh. like a Jedi. And to get here so fast, you must fly like a Jedi. Who are you? Let's get you home. Senator Kelly, thank you so much. But the state of the city starts in two minutes. I can get you there in two seconds. The mayor of Mesa, John Giles. Okay. Don, Don, be very careful with this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, everyone, good morning. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for letting us have some fun with that opening video. Uh, I'd like to thank, of course, Senator Mark Kelly, uh, Alice Cooper, and the, uh, his Solid Rock Teen Center, and my friend Brian Nissen, and our Emmy Award winning Channel 11 team for your help in making that opening. Thank you. Just in case you hadn't guessed, the theme for this year's State of the City is space, right? Did you need me to tell you that? Um, I, I'm sure you're probably asking yourself why. You know, where, where is he going with this theme? Well, I don't know about you, but I grew up in the era of the Jetsons, Star Trek, Star Wars, and E.T. Uh, those futuristic, otherworldly shows and movies always excited me to think about what is possible. And who would have thought that we could now think of Mesa in that context? In recent years, we've seen a significant amount of progress in the city of Mesa. We're home to global brands, and now we even have a spaceship manufacturer. We're playing a big role in the semiconductor supply chain world, and we're adva advanced manufacturing and high-tech companies are seeking us out. We've welcomed innovative housing solutions. Our youth programs have received national recognition, and we're called upon to, uh, to talk about our forward-thinking public safety practices. We continue to dream big, and for this mayor, Mesa will always be out of this world. Uh, I'm fond of saying that we stand on the shoulders of giants here in Mesa. What's happened here would not be possible without a history of great leadership. Speaking of great leadership, let's hear from Mesa's City Council. I'm Councilmember Mark Freeman and I represent District 1. Our dreams are becoming a reality because of the way we honor our past and work with our community to plan our future. I'm Councilmember Julie Spilsbury and I represent District 2. Our dreams for Mesa are becoming a reality because of the way people in our city care for each other and share their kindness and compassion. I'm Vice Mayor Francisco Heredia and I represent District 3. Mesa's dreams are becoming a reality because of our commitment to building bridges to education and good career opportunities. I'm Councilmember Jen Duff and I represent District 4. Our dreams for Mesa are becoming a reality because we continue to realize our vision for an authentic, local, and creative downtown. I'm Councilmember Alicia Goforth, and I represent District 5. Mesa's dreams are becoming a reality because we are building strong relationships with our partners in both the private and public sectors. I'm Councilmember Scott Summers, representing District 6. 
Mesa's dreams are becoming a reality because of excellent planning and investment in infrastructure that attracts industry leaders to our city. Council members, will you please stand and be recognized? Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, I appreciate being a part of a really great city council. Uh, we also have highly skilled and a dedicated city management team. I wanna thank our city manager, Chris Brady, and this group of uh, committed public servants for everything they do for Mesa. Thank you for a great city. Will you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. I also want to welcome and thank Mesa Fire and Medical Chief Mary Camelli and Mesa Police Chief Ken Koss for your leadership of our incredible public safety teams. Will you please stand and be recognized? There they are. Thank you, Chiefs. Uh, these people give tirelessly to our city and believe in Mesa's progress, like our past council members, mayors, and city managers have. To all of them, I want to give my sincere Deepest appreciation and thank you for a wonderful city. Thank you very much. And a big thank you to our partner in making this event happen, the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Sally, thank you, you and your team do a great job hosting this event. Well done. <clears throat> All right, here we go. It wouldn't be a state of the city without me telling you about the state of the city, right? So, so let's go. Wait for the special effects. <laughs> Folks, it's a good time to be in Mesa. We're entering 2024 very optimistic about the city, how the city of Mesa is doing. Since its incorporation in 1883, the city has grown from one square mile to 142 square miles. And we continue to be one of the fastest growing cities in America. Last year, Mesa was one of only 10 communities in the U.S. to receive the designation of All America City by the National Civic League. Mesa's Asian District was recognized with a gold award by the International Economic Development Council. Our city continued implementing fiber optic and wireless connectivity to bridge the digital divide with over 110 miles of fiber optic cable already in use and 87 acres of free Wi-Fi area. We continue to be committed to our goal of making fiber available to every home and business in Mesa. We will do that very soon. Mesa continues to be one of the safest large cities in the United States, and our public safety teams are well known for adopting innovation and technology. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Our fiscal health is strong. We were assigned a triple A rating for our general obligation bonds, noting that Mesa has, quote, the highest level of financial resilience, close quote. Mesa is a college town with over 40,000 students currently enrolled in higher ed. On the economic development front, we've welcomed billions of dollars in capital investment in the last year with over 9 million square feet of development and over 2,500 new jobs. In fact, the Mesa Gateway area has more industrial space under construction than any other zip code in the nation. And despite the expansion, this, this explosive growth, there continues to still be ample opportunities for companies to locate in Mesa. It's all systems go for the city of Mesa. All systems go. As we grow, we've added some incredible new community gathering places. That includes additions and expansions of parks like the state-of-the-art pickleball courts at Gene Autry and Monterey Parks. We opened the first self-service library in the state of Arizona where a remote librarian will help you pick your next favorite book. And we welcomed back Mesa's first post office as an inviting community venue called The Post. These new points of pride represent our ongoing commitment to improving our quality of life here in Mesa. Earlier, I mentioned that Mesa is an all-America city. Let's take a closer look at that journey. This community is tall like a saguaro. 
The city of Mesa has won the All-America City Award for 2023. We were one of 20 finalists that went to Denver, Colorado to compete in the national competition and one of 10 finalists that have succeeded with winning the award. This year's award theme was creating thriving communities through youth engagement. And so the city of Mesa, we chose to feature five of our different community programs. We had Project Lit, Activate, the Police Department Spark Program, the Mayor's Youth Committee, and Mesa College Promise. It really was like the perfect opportunity to take the stories of each individual program and be able to highlight them in a very unique way. You know, I think uh, part of the reason that we won is a lot of the people that we brought were the kids that are in the programs. So they got to speak for themselves about their experiences. Then they got to ask questions of us about the program. So they had the application, they had the presentation, and that's when our youth just knocked it out of the park. They could stand up and talk about how those programs have had an impact in their life. The purpose is to engage you in tackling some of the most difficult issues facing our community. Always putting a smile on my face, even after the biggest mistakes I've made, I am Mesa. I am Mesa. We are Mesa, together Mesa. And just creating what really, in, in hindsight, is a very simple chance. Like, I am Mesa, we are Mesa, together Mesa. But it was so powerful to have all of us, like, presenting and performing that on the stage. So I think that helped us out, too. I've never been prouder to say, I am Mesa. We are Mesa, together Mesa! Thank you. So in that piece you heard, together Mesa, repeated. It's a phrase that you'll hear more about today and going forward. Each year, I bring together our faith leaders to talk about ways we can work together to address the most pressing needs in our community. Out of these efforts, we launched the Faith Leaders Coalition, a new initiative facilitated by the city, but led by the faith community. I want to recognize and thank our faith community for the many ways you serve the residents of Mesa in partnership with our city. I appreciate the faith leaders who are with us, with us this morning. Shifting gears slightly, we also have with us some other very special guests. Uh, President Martin Javier of the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community and Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis of the Gila River Indian Community. Would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> President, uh, President Javier, thank you very much for that wonderful blessing that you offered at the beginning of our program. Our great state of Arizona is native land. It's important that we honor the legacy of our tribal ancestors and recognize the tremendous impact of our tribal partners that they'll always have on our state and on the city that we love. For example, the canal system in our region is one of the most sophisticated in the world. The indigenous people that are here now are the direct descendants of those canal architects. Mesa is also home to the Mesa Grande Cultural Park. Let's hear more about this historic and cultural treasure. My name is Ismael Sanchez Morales. I'm the curator of anthropology at the Arizona Museum of Natural History. So I'm in charge of the care, the management, and the research of the collections of anthropology and ethnography at the, at the museum. We are now in the Mesa Grande Cultural Park, which is an actual archaeological site. The most interesting feature of this archaeological site is the platform mount, which is the structure that I have behind me. This was a rectangular structure, three stories high and about the same length as a football field. And it was built in between the 12th and the 15th centuries by the ancestral Sonoran desert dwellers, which are the direct ancestors of the modern Otan people. My name is Shane Antoine. I'm the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community. And my job entails me preserving Otham and Pipash uh, cultural history. The U.S. government and Native history isn't great, and so there's a lot of historical trauma there, a lot of generational trauma, and so we don't want that to continue. We want to break that cycle. I think these kind of conversations and all of this input that we're trying to, to get and collaborate with our tribal partners is really important, and it's a basic action that the city can take in order to develop these um, 
these meaningful collaborations with the original inhabitants of these lands. We are actively working with the Arizona Museum of Natural History to provide better access to uh, Mesa Grande. It's an ancient place that, again, back to what wanting to instill pride with them to see this is what it was done and this is how it was done hundreds of years ago. But what we were given by the Creator, we have to be thankful for and we also have to kind of praise. So ritual and song reminds us of the reverence and the respect that's needed to thrive upon the landscape. It's their right to tell us what to say and how they want it how they want this information to be disseminated and portrayed. Mesa Grande is a good reminder that the tribes have been here for hundreds and thousands of years. You know? They were the first inhabitants of the lands that we call now the city of Mesa, right? And so they remain a vital and vibrant part of our community. I think that's one of the most important and fundamental things that people need to learn. We understand progress has to happen, things have to be built, but there needs to be a respect to what the Aboriginal people had here, and I think we're, can, we're starting to do that, and we hope to continue to do that. Today, I'm pleased to share two announcements related to our Native American partners. <clears throat> One week ago, I issued a proclamation that acknowledges the history of the land that comprises present-day Mesa. We worked closely with the leadership here today to develop Mesa's land acknowledgement statement. This written statement is far more than a piece of paper, but it's only as meaningful as the actions that are born of its intentions. And so I'm also pleased to announce today that working with our tribal partners, we intend to restore the name of Mesa Grande to its origins. Stay tuned for that announcement. <clears throat> Here's that together Mesa motto that I was talking about earlier. Uh, this initiative is about respect and inclusion. It celebrates the partnerships with our tribal neighbors, our faith leaders, our nonprofits, and so many others who strengthen our community and help keep Mesa on the right track. Together, we are stronger, and together, we can build coalitions that nurture respectful relationships in Mesa. It wouldn't be a state of the city without me talking about Mesa's food scene. So, Let's take a food break. Our award-winning Asian district is expanding at, and it continues to be the place to find the best variety of Asian foods in the state. I stopped by one of the popular spots that if you haven't heard about this place, you really should have. Let's visit Happy Bao. Matt, this, your, your restaurant's won a lot of awards. It's, it's very, very popular. Uh, I think because uh, mainly we use uh, recipes from my grandparents. As I got older, I was like, hmm, I feel like we can really modernize it and capitalize. I mean, it seems like in, in Asian cuisine, there's various types of dumplings, right? Yes, bao, literally translated, means a bun, but xiaolong bao, AKA the soup dumpling, uh, has the word bao in there, but we call it soup dumpling. So I, I think you're gonna let us walk in and see a little bit in the kitchen how we make the bao and how you prepare some of these really special dishes. All right, let's go. Okay. What you wanna do is take a skin and then you're gonna place the uh, filling right in the middle. All right, so the, the soup broth is frozen inside of that. Yes. I'm already behind. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. How did you make it so pretty? How many of these do you think you grabbed? On average, we sell about 10 to 12,000 of these a week. Can you show me how, how do I eat properly yes, the, the shoe long bao? The shoe long bao sauce. Traditionally, you just use black vinegar with uh, ginger slices. Uh -huh. Black vinegar, not to be confused with soy sauce. Yes, black vinegar. Yeah. So we're going to grab the bao from the top because the top is the tougher part. So you don't want to break the skin gently. Grab it like that, dip the bowl like this, put it back on the spoon. Yeah. All right. And Got you it. like ginger, you grab a piece of ginger, and then we're gonna pop, pop the hole like this. Yeah. So all that broth comes out. Got it. Right. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. So, and then we're gonna squeeze down so the broth, you know, <laughs> drains as you slurp okay. it. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Wow. And then one shot go. Here we go. Oh, 
I'm never, this has changed my life. I'm never going to eat dumplings the same way that I used to before. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was worth the price of admission for the state of the city just now. Now you know how to properly eat soup dumplings. Thank you for what you've added to our downtown Asian district. You're a really important part of, of Mekong Plaza. It's such fun to see the success that you're enjoying now. Thank you. I'm so glad we have an Asian district. Uh, each year, Mesa's public safety teams set the bar higher and higher in terms of our, their service to our residents. Uh, our investment in public safety keeps response times to a minimum, provides training, equipment, and facilities that help our men and women in uniform do their jobs safely. Our crime stats are trending in the right direction, thanks in part to how we're employing technology, engaging with the community, offering programs for teens, and collaborating with community partners. I'm proud that Mesa is one of the few cities in the country that provides a mental health response when called to a mental health crisis. We're doing this through four crisis teams that are available 24-7 to assist our PD and fire in the field. Last year, Mesa diverted over 3,300 911 calls to behavioral health specialists because not every emergency requires an armed police officer or an equipped fire truck. I'm proud that we're moving the needle on this issue, doing what a lot of other communities want to do. It's the best thing for those in crisis, for our public safety teams, and for our community. Our expanded mental health response also plays an important role in our response to homelessness. Through community court and our off the streets program, Mesa has taken big steps to shift how we respond to the issue. Let's take a look. seen increases in, in families, in older adults experiencing homelessness, in veterans experiencing homelessness, but we've also seen increases in single adults. As we've seen this overall increase, every single subpopulation is also increasing across the region. Because of those increasing rents, it's leading to increased evictions and increasing homelessness as a result. Today we're here with the uh, reaching out to the homeless, providing resources, education and enforcement. Uh, one other thing that we've added today is one team is going to be riding with uh, Valley Metro buses. We have uh, cards for you to provide to them. We have uh, heat relief centers. Um, we appreciate Community Bridges, ITS and Copa Health, our resource providers coming out here along with Parks and Recs and the Mesa Police Department. Uh, to participate in today's event. Mesa has done a really good job of leading with services. So we know oftentimes the police or fire or parks are the first person interacting with the person experiencing homelessness. And through the Off the Streets program, it's been an instrumental piece of we can offer services and there's a place for folks to go where we will get you the right connection to services if you're willing to do it. Uh, we know this, this particular couple. Uh, Cindy is a woman in a wheelchair. She's special needs. On this particular occasion, I was able to find out what their current situation was. They had just been evicted from a hotel. I was able to call the uh, Community Bridges Navigators and they immediately came out. When we first arrived on scene, we kind of get a brief summary uh, from the police side of things. Uh, they said he was recently released and he wasn't welcome there. And I asked if he had a normal place to stay or not and uh, the patient was able to let me know that he was homeless at that time. Really what we do for every patient is we just do a thorough assessment, uh, maybe get a little background of what's going on and make sure they get the right resource they need. They want to engage with the individual. They want what's best for the person experiencing homelessness. And it's not just the traditional way of thinking of enforcement first. It is services first and then enforcement of you can't stay here if you're trespassing. We need to address those things, but also at the end of the day, what services can I get you into? Are you willing to go to the resource that is best for you to get you on the path to whatever is next? No one city can address homelessness alone. I know that we are headed in the right direction. There's still more we have to do.
Uh, I really want to commend our public safety teams and city staff for con connecting people with the support that they need to move forward. Let's take another food break and visit one of Mesa's new shops in our downtown, Outcast Donuts. Hi everyone, we are at Outcast Donuts. I'm really excited about Outcast Donuts. It's a perfect fit for downtown Mesa. Uh, TJ Tillman uh, and his lovely wife and their great staff have brought a wonderful business to downtown Mesa. Tell us what's different about Outcast yeah. Donuts because it's not your <laughs> normal donut sure. shop. We make all of our donuts out of croissant dough. Right. So um, they're not cronuts because that's a trademark term. So we call them layered donuts. Yeah. We've got a lot of different flavors, some kind of off the wall, some more traditional. Outcast is not just donuts. It's also you've got you've got savory food. Yeah, so we make uh, obviously the donuts and then we take those same donuts and without glazing them so they're not sweet, they're just savory. We take two of those donuts and make buns out of them to create sandwiches. And then on top of that, we have an ice cream cone that we call a dope cone. Right. We made that out of grilled donut dough. All right, I, I'm excited to be here. The main reason I'm here is because I, I'm hoping you'll invite me into the kitchen to make some donuts. Consider yourself invited. The donut that caught my eye was the mango unchained. What do I need to know to make a mango unchained? So it's going to go down this conveyor belt, and then we let it sit for one to two minutes, and then we'll glaze it and frost it. There you go. You hear that? She said perfect. The way they land matters. If they land on top of each other, it'll dent the donut. If there's an emergency with a dented donut, you could call me. Okay, I'll uh, make sure I get your I'll, number after this. I'll run right over. <laughs> which one was made by the professional and which one was made by the amateur? Look at that. Oh yeah, my gosh. There we go, sir. Outcast Donuts. Is there any better use for a mega screen than to have a 40-foot <laughs> donut? Uh, I, I don't think so. Ladies and gentlemen, water. Let's talk about water. We, we need it to sustain life, and the city of Mesa is in the water business. Thank you, Lily. About a year ago, I said to our city manager, Mr. Brady, we're getting a lot of press that's suggesting that we're gonna run out of water. We need to be able to, of course, respond to those, to those types of questions. Uh, so my suggestion was that we get one of our smart uh, engineers and let's prepare a supply and demand graph. Let's have you know, one line for here's our water supply, here's another line for what the anticipated demand is for water, and then we can show it to the world and say, either we have a problem or we don't. Well, this is what happens when you ask an engineer to prepare a graph, okay? Uh, well, we could spend, I promise you, we could spend the rest of the morning dissecting what this graph, what this chart means, but I'll tell you simply what it means is that we have multiple layers of supply of our water. And even with the most aggressive estimates for demand and the most pessimistic estimates for supply, Mesa is in good shape for water. We'll continue, of course, to have constraints on our supply of Colorado River water, and things will continue to change. So it's important still that we all are committed to water conservation. But when you're talking to people out of state, they need to know that Arizona is really the only place in the country where you have to demonstrate a 100-year guaranteed supply of water before they'll let you build anything. And because we live in the desert, the people who came before us were very diligent about creating infrastructure for water. So between CAP and SRP and the water, groundwater recharging that we're doing, we've done what we need to do to continue to have that 100-year guaranteed supply of water. While we have enough water, again, we need to be diligent about water conservation. There are many things that we can do about that, but one very effective thing that we can all do is replace our grass turf. I replaced mine at my house, and I, I got to tell you, I couldn't be happier about it. The city offers a grass to zero escape incentive program for homes and businesses, and I hope that you'll all look into it and take advantage of it. Another great project our city has taken to boost our water supply is called the Central Mesa Reuse Pipeline. The short-term bad news is if you see your neighborhood along this route, you might have to find a way around some construction. 
because we're building a 10 and a half mile long pipeline to take reclaimed water down to our friends at the Gila River Indian community. The good news is this adds tremendously to our water inventory. Shade, along with water, is also something good to have in the desert. One way to create shade is by planting trees. Last year, I announced a one million tree challenge. I'm pleased to share that nearly 7,000 new trees have been added to Mesa since we announced that initiative. This is one simple step that we can all do to contribute. These deliberate actions will help to increase our tree canopy coverage and lower the heat island effect in our neighborhoods. Last year, I was proud to be the only elected official in the U.S. appointed to the inaugural Federal Electric Vehicle Working Group. Electric vehicles have a role to play in helping us reach our climate action goals. They're also more efficient, no tailpipe emissions, less maintenance, and they're fun to drive. Just over a month ago, we took delivery of the nation's first full-size all-electric fire truck. I'm proud of Mesa for taking this step, demonstrating that we are serious about our climate action goals. Equally important, the reduction in tailpipe emissions and noise pollution will positively impact the safety and health of our employees and our residents. On the heels of putting our first fire truck into service, Mesa received one of the largest grants from the U.S. Department of Transportation to expand our EV charging network. I'm excited to share that we received $11.9 million to implement this charging network, making EV ownership more practical and attainable for Mesa residents. I've told you what the city is doing to reach our climate action goals. Now, what are you going to do? Let's all find ways to do our part on this important topic. I feel like it's time for another food break, don't you? Um, I've got the perfect special occasion for a date night for you. Hidden in Northeast Mesa is Board and Batten. Let's take a look. I am very excited to be at Board and Batten, a, a fabulous restaurant in Northeast Mesa in the Citrus area with Michael Mills, the owner and creator of this restaurant. Michael, thank you for uh, creating a, a place that's, that's uh, very special to me and my family and a lot of people here in Northeast Mesa. You're not on a busy arterial. You're tucked away in a quiet place in the middle of an old citrus orchard. So it just creates this very peaceful setting it's ended up being probably the, one of the best things about it because it's secluded, because it's private and quiet, and there is the, the feeling of this is where the groves were. I, I think of Board of, and Batten as, as a, there are no white tablecloths here, but I think of you as a white tablecloth restaurant. There's such an emphasis on the quality of the food, uh, and uh, there's obviously a lot of thought that's gone into the, to the menu. When we started this, my goal was to create a place the backdrop for an event, for an experience. So what people need to leave with is, we don't know what was so impressive because the food was good, the service was good, and the ambiance, and so we call it the trifecta. People want to put restaurants into categories, but your menu, to me, seems pretty diverse. I, I, am I saying that correctly? You are, you are. I, I, if I were to try to describe it when someone asks what it is, I will say it's New American or, or with a twist. I apologize for all of you that are not eating this right now, but... Mm, yeah. Michael, thank you for being a, a good, loyal Mesa guy and sticking around and, and using your talents to create a very special uh, dining experience in Mesa. Thank you very much. We're happy to be here. Don, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, okay? I'm just saying, okay? You might want to take your husband out for a nice, <laughs> nice place. Uh, a lot of Mesa's success can be attributed to the strong connection that this community has to education. That's what brought my family to Mesa in 1949. Education is a core value in our community, but it's also one of the areas where there will always be room for improvement. To that end, Mesa established an Education and Workforce Roundtable. 
During the pandemic, many of our students fell behind in their reading skills through no fault of their own. At the heart of everything is the ability to read. Literacy is like the force in Star Wars. With it, the world becomes full of possibilities. Late last year, our round table kicked off a new program in partnership with AARP that connects retirees with young students to work on reading skills. Let's take a look. Kids are not where they need to be as far as reading, and so cities like Mesa coming in as a Read on Mesa and making it a priority to get all of our kids to the place that they need to be and to meet their reading potential is going to be the way that this gets done. Experience Core is a new program that we're launching in Mesa this year. It's a one-on-one -on -one tutoring program where we bring in our retired residents to come and work one-on-one -on -one with first through third graders in our elementary schools. My daughter struggled when she was reading comprehension, so what we just learned was that comprehension is based on having that initial kindergarten through third grade reading level. So if they can get to that, then they're gonna be reading to learn other subjects. The unique thing about this program is that it really targets students who just need that little extra practice, that need that person to sit with them and you know focus with them and build a relationship to be able to push them over to be proficient. There is so much work being done in our community in the early literacy space, and you know the power of Read on Mesa is bringing all of those together and ensuring that we're all working together and working smarter and aligning our resources so that we can impact as many of our students as possible. We make sure that we're meeting children where they're at as far as their reading skills go, and if we do that well, then what we will have is sort of a system of supports that just ensures that children are reading at grade level, and then there's no stopping them. Helping Mesa's kids increase their reading skills is an all-hands-on-deck initiative. I invite each of you to think about what you can do to help us with this. Uh, this brings me to another exciting update. In 2020, we established the Mesa College Promise to help bridge the financial gap for qualified graduating high school seniors to attend Mesa Community College. The Promise guarantees these students can access up to two years of free community college education. Last year, First Lady Jill Biden took notice of this program. It's not only impacting those high school students, but also their families. Promise student Lily Hernandez, hi Lily, uh, her pursuit of an associate degree in construction management inspired her father to go back to school. Lily's dad is one of many adults in Mesa looking for opportunities to increase their job skills and credentials. Recognizing this, I'm excited to announce that the City of Mesa and Mesa Community College are expanding the Mesa College Promise to include adult learners returning to school or continuing their education. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, this program opens applications this spring. And more exciting news. I'm pleased to share that Google is making a contribution to the Mesa College Promise in the amount of $100,000. <clears throat> Thank you. I'd like to recognize Kate Franco and everyone here today from Google. Welcome to Mesa. Uh, and thank you for this significant event, or that significant contribution. One of the reasons why so many businesses support the Promise program uh, is to help meet their workforce needs. These businesses get it. I would hope that you could add your name along with Google and the other businesses you see here to help the, keep the Mesa Promise a reality in our community. Taking the leap from high school to a career path or further education is not always direct or easy, but Mesa has a legacy of building those pathways. We're pleased to have with us today the superintendents from Mesa, Gilbert, Higley, Evett, and Queen Creek School Districts. Will you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> uh, 
our school districts are helping students find success through work-based learning, including career fairs, job shadowing, and internships. A great example of these programs, getting students into the workforce faster, is the Mesa Public Schools Innovative Partnerships Team. If you're a business person and you're committed to building our future workforce, please pull out your phone right now and follow this QR code and also stop and talk to someone, some of the folks in the lobby on your way out. Uh, this might be the most valuable connection you make today. So again, if you and your business could host some high school interns, please uh, take note of this QR code. We'll leave it up uh, for a moment for, to allow you to get connected. With Mesa Community College, Benedictine University, and ASU going strong, Mesa is a college town. And we're excited to break ground next month on NAU's Hospitality Workforce Development Center. Opening in the fall, it will offer education and training programs to grow the hospitality workforce in the Valley. Earlier this year, we announced the ASU Poly Innovation Zone, which will bring over 500 jobs and over $800 million in economic impact. Since the ASU Polytechnic campus opened in 1996, over 33,000 students have graduated in a wide range of fields, and that's only going to grow with the new manufacturing school for systems and networks coming online. This is a big deal. This is uh, the, the Advanced Manufacturing College is a first of its kind college in the United States. The ASU Mix Center has exceeded all expectations since opening its doors downtown and we're eager to build on that momentum. It's time to talk about what's next for ASU and Mesa. Let's hear from ASU President Dr. Michael Crow. Hi, Michael Crow here from Arizona State University. I just want to say thank you to the city of Mesa and to the leadership of Mesa, Mayor Giles and the council for uh, uh, basically coming together with us to find a way where we can work together to build a better community, to build fantastic outcomes for Mesa. We're very excited about the Polytechnic campus, the building of the, of a, the most significant manufacturing uh, engineering building uh, ever put together at universities, the expansion of the Polytechnic campus, uh, what we've got going on there relative to the new uh, innovation district that we're building on the Polytechnic campus. And then in downtown Mesa, we're very excited by the outcomes of the Mix Center and thank you for your support as a co-investor in that facility with the university. We think that we've put together uh, a world-class, state-of-the-art facility for all things that enhance uh, digital creativity, so much so that we see downtown Mesa now as a site for our uh, ability to expand the ability to help grow a digital creativity based economy. This is in aspects of gaming and advanced learning and advanced expression and digital media and filmmaking and all things that are now enhanced computationally by digital technology. We're so excited to be in downtown Mesa. We're excited because of our partnership. We've really benefited from, benefited from the leadership of the mayor in figuring out how we could evolve the university into this new area of economic opportunity, this new area of personal development, this new area of technology development to add another dimension to the economy here in Arizona and specifically in Mesa. So we're all in in the furtherance of the creation of a, of a creative technology center in Mesa built around the Mix Center and we're looking forward to working with the city in the future to be able to facilitate that. So again, sorry I couldn't be there, but we're very, very excited about all the things that we've got going on in our partnership with the city of Mesa. Thank you, Dr. Crow. Uh, I'm happy to announce today our next partnership with ASU. As Dr. Crow mentioned, the Mix Center will anchor the ASU Mesa Center for Creative Technology in our downtown. The next expansion of that zone will be at the site of the current post office at Center and First Street. We'll work to retain the post office function, but ASU will locate programs there that build upon the creative technology programs currently available at the Mix Center. We're so fortunate to have education leaders, civic leaders, business leaders, and nonprofit leaders who are all wholeheartedly committed to educational attainment for all of Mesa's residents. Thank you all for helping to preserve this core value of education in Mesa. Well, let's take another food break, right? The next one is a story of passion and perseverance. Let's hear about Proof Bread. 
You should never leave downtown Mesa without having a proof bread bag with you when you walk out because it's that good. Amanda, you guys started proof in your garage. Why was it important for you to, to be in, in downtown Mesa? I think every downtown district should have a really, really good bakery. How, how many different menu items, how many different things do you, do you bake? So our core menu is about 10 items. Just started experimenting with ancient grains again. So this is our Khorasan loaf. This is made with an ancient grain from Persia. The air holes, the softness of the bread and the, and the, the, the crustiness of the crust is something that is really not comparable to anything you oh, get. Oh, not at, at all, not store. at all. Yeah. This is all done, you know, in conjunction with nature, not against yeah. nature. I know that you're, you're already looking at other locations, uh, other parts of the valley as well. Yeah, yeah, we really want to make proof accessible to all. We've got three locations now, um, downtown Mesa, Shea and 32nd Street, and in Litchfield Park. And we're hoping to open one more in downtown Phoenix, at Eco Phoenix. And then we're at five plus markets every weekend. Uh, we're making our pan au chocolat right now. Basically just score the dough. Now we're going to cut these out. So now, last okay. step on these, we're gonna oh. bring these bars together at the very edge. Okay. Basically, I'll start two rolls, okay. and then just gently roll them up, like so. And you can see the layers on, on mine here on the, wow. on the side. There really is 81 layers of dough and butter on top of each other. Not a bad concept. Again, it, I think it's a must-do. Make sure you pop into proof and walk out with at least a loaf of sourdough. Your family will really thank you for it. I gotta say, I'm really gonna miss this job. Uh, if you can find a job as a professional eater, take it, <laughs> all right? They're few and far between. Uh, like Proof Bread, our state is experiencing an unprecedented time of economic growth, and Mesa is playing a lead role in that story. Major employers are bringing thousands of jobs and billions of dollars of development to our community, as I mentioned earlier. That's particularly true in and around the Gateway Airport. Uh, what was once an Air Force base is now a thriving university and commercial airport. In addition to being a significant economic driver for Mesa and the region, Gateway Airport continues to break its own records for passenger traffic. The Gateway Terminal expansion is right on time to meet the needs of one of the fastest growing airports in the country. I hope to see many of you a week from today when we cut the ribbon for the beautiful expanded passenger concourse. We've stayed busy celebrating expansions and welcoming new projects in new and established industries, industries like aerospace, defense, semiconductor, electric vehicles, and advanced manufacturing and health. On the screen is a list of the companies that have come to Mesa in the last year. Let me highlight just a few. Dexcom is expanding. Pentagon Technologies is bringing a $38 million investment. Amphenol announced its expansion. Zenergy is locating its U.S. headquarters in Mesa. Super Radiator Coils broke ground on their newest manufacturing facility. Google began phase one of its Mesa project. Amazon's storage and distribution center, the largest in the country, is up and running. DSV Air and Sea located a hub at Gateway. And Cisco began work on their new facility in Southeast Mesa. I'm skimming through these, but there are no small announcements. It tells a story about industries finding success in Mesa. We're a leader in attracting industrial development and global brands to our city. The companies I mentioned join Apple, Boeing, Meta, Virgin Galactic, Gulfstream, JX Nippon, and others in choosing Mesa for major operations. At the same time, downtown Mesa has welcomed many great local concepts, including Phantom Fox, Alchemy 48, Level One, Outcast Donuts, Arizona Distilling, Mad Candy Shop, The Salted Knot, Goat and Ram Pizza, really good, Record Nile Shop, Nile Record Shop, and more. They join our legacy businesses like Pomeroy's, The Nile, and Milano's. More announcements for downtown are on the way, so stay tuned. We also celebrated new housing coming online downtown, including The Commons and Eco Mesa, and we broke ground on the residences with Chicanos por la Causa. We used to say downtown had potential. We don't need to say that much anymore. Downtown Mesa is back, and it's a genuine mix of friendly, 
authentic local businesses that are keeping the character and history of our city alive. It's because of so many people in this room that we've moved beyond potential. We're not done by any stretch of the imagination, but let's take a look at how far we've come. Quiet, sleepy town, a uh, downtown that rolled up its carpets at 5 p.m. People described it as a ghost town. And that's what's really changed, is that we've added a lot of food and beverage options that weren't here before. We have probably at least a dozen restaurants that are up and running successfully for multiple years since then. We have breweries now, lots of coffee shops. There's been a lot of things that have really played into this, and it goes back even further. The investment in the Art Center is a huge element to this. You layer that with the investment in transit and light rail that opened in, in 2015, and then you put on top of that the investment in, in higher education into ASU and the Mix Center. It was when the city's decision to make an investment significantly into ASU really signaled to the development community that downtown and Mesa was serious about making downtown a place. And when we started working on this project, gosh, almost four years ago, we could see things really starting to happen. Well, they have happened, and, and downtown Mesa is a great reality now. We, we need to give credit where credit's due, and it's due in a lot of places, right? The work that the, that the city has done to promote the growth, but really it's the people who invested their livelihood in downtown Mesa, right? Who also saw the potential and had their visions and had their dreams and decided to invest them down here. Our leadership, you know, elected and appointed leadership have really made a concerted effort to preserve the assets that the city owns, whether it's the post where we're sitting today. But this is just one example. You know, Mesa's first library turning into the studios. You know, we're on the second phase of construction there to build out the rest of that. And, and now when you look around and you see it, it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. What you see today is just the start of where we're going. I thought five years ago that Mesa was next, but Mesa's now. Thank you. Mesa is working on our, with our community to develop our 2050 general plan. My colleagues on the city council are working diligently on this along with the members of our community. Now is the time to get involved and share your vision for tomorrow's Mesa. Please don't miss the opportunity to be a part of shaping Mesa's for the Mesa for future generations. We cannot do this without your help. Thank you so much for being here this morning and allowing me to share with you some of the important things that are happening in our community. It's been a lot of fun to look back at how Mesa has taken giant steps forward in recent years. I'm proud of how we celebrate our history and continue to dream big for our city. It's been the honor of my life to serve my hometown as mayor. But Mesa's best days are ahead of us. We're only getting started Mesa is taking off. Thank you. Three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff.